discussion on uh, the IA 16, which deals with the property, plant and equipment. Yesterday we had uh, discussion on some aspects of the PPE. We will continue our discussions on PPE. Today the focus will be on these three aspects of the IA 16, depreciation, revaluation and impairment. We saw that depreciation is a systematic allocation of depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. So two important terms is the depreciable amount and the useful life. But as I mentioned yesterday, the depreciation can be used for both cost models and the revaluation models. The depreciable amount is the cost of the asset as decided by the IA 16 less the residual value if any. So that cost minus the residual value will be depreciated over its useful life. The methods of depreciation, IS 16 says it can be, the, the choice is given to the company that the methods can be straight line method or diminishing balance method or units of production method. For example, let me continue with the same example I took in the last session. So the cost of the plant is 80,000, the life is 4 years, the production per year is 300 units, 500 units, 100 units and 100 units and if you use the depreciation for SLM 25 percent and for DDM the diminishing balance 62.5 percent. You can see this, I am using a rule of thumb that the depreciation rate for DDM is 2 and a half times of the SLM. So as a result the depreciation under SLM remain constant over the life. The depreciation if I compute for DDM is uh, reduces very high in early stages goes on reducing over the life. Whereas on the unit production method the depreciation will replicate the amount of production that you made. For example, if we change the production then the, the depreciation will change. If I say that no production in the third year, then the depreciation will not be there in the third year. So the depreciation can be on SLM or diminishing balance or the unit production. You can see from the table that all other things remaining constant, the depreciation methods will have a huge implication on the profit determined. For example, in the first year, the depreciation here is the maximum, so all other things remaining constant, the loss or the profit will be the lowest in this method. Now let us see, depreciation is shown in the income statement, but accumulated depreciation is shown on the balance sheet. Every year depreciation goes on accumulating. If I continue with the same question and so the balance sheet, if the cost of the asset is 100,000. If the cost of the asset is 100,000, if I charge depreciation at 60 percent on DDM, first year accumulated depreciation is 60,000, the second year accumulated depreciation is 84,000 and third year accumulated depreciation is 93,600. The point to be noted is on the balance sheet, I show the cost less accumulated depreciation and this 40, 16 and 6,400 is called WDV or the net block or the net value of the assets post depreciation. Same is the case if I show on SLM, you can see 100,000 minus 20,000, 100,000 minus 40,000 and 100,000 minus 60,000. So the depreciation which is shown in the, in the income statement is added every year over a period of time. Now let us go to this, uh, the, uh, the second issue for today's discussion, revaluation. If the market value of an asset is greater than the book value of an asset, then the business can revalue the assets. But the revaluation should be shown as a reserve on the balance sheet. Let me take an example to explain. If I continue with this previous example and, uh, and say that the value of the uh, Suppose the market value of the asset is 75,000, but the book value of the asset is 40,000. Like in this case, if you see this, 40,000 at the end of the third year, and I want to revalue them. And for the revaluation, 
is 75,000 is a market value. How will that be shown on the balance sheet? Let us see this. After revaluation, before revaluation, the book value is 40,000. After revaluation, I would like to show the revalued assets at 75. So, I have to create a revaluation reserve of 35,000 and corresponding adjustment has to be done on an accumulated depreciation. What is that? The accumulated depreciation is 60,000 minus 35,000 and that 35,000 is a revaluation reserves. But if the market value is less than the book value, then you are bound to show the impairment and that is called impairment loss. So, if I continue with the same example, if the book value is 40,000 and the market value is 25,000, you have to show the impairment loss of 15,000. However, the impairment loss will not be shown on the balance sheet as a separate item, but will be shown in the income statement as a separate item. Let us see that. So, if you see this, impairment loss is reduced from the, uh, from the cost. So, the value of the asset is cost minus accumulated depreciation minus the impairment losses and, no cha and the reserves are reduced to that extent of 15,000 through the income statement. That means, the revaluation re reserves, if it is goes up, it is shown in the balance sheet. Impairment losses, if the market value is low, it is shown in the income statement. The other related issues which will come up that what will be the cost of an asset if there is an exchange of an asset? What will be the cost of an asset if the PPE is held for sale? What will be the cost? What are the various disclosure norms which are required under the IAS 16? These are the other related issues which I pick up in my next discussion. Thank you very much.